One day, there was this businessman and he hopped into a taxi. And then they took off to the airport. And so as they are going to, to the airport and they are driving in the right lane, when suddenly a black car jumped out of nowhere and it almost caused a problem, an accident. And the, the, the businessman was very, very upset with how, how, this stack, uh, how this driver, the driver of the black car, really just caused, almost sent them in hospital because of his reckless, reckless uh, driving. And so, to the surprise of the businessman, the driver of the black car was the one who went out. And he was very angry. And he was cussing and he was... Um, uh, insulting the taxi driver, he was saying how how you know how how people try to tra uh, uh, to cast and to really insult the driver. And all this all this time, the driver, the taxi driver, was just calm and he just waved and just smiled and he didn't really retaliate. And it is something really unexpected, especially we, we, when we are living this kind of age that a lot of people would simply respond with another insult. So the businessman just watching all these things happen and and they they just took off they continued with their travel going to the airport and he asked the taxi driver and he said you know what i was kind of surprised you didn't you didn't uh talk back you just simply hold your cool and you didn't really try to make a big deal out of it and so the taxi driver um gave Something that is, I would say, a very wise and profound answer to the, the businessman. And he said, you know what? People are like garbage truck. Sometimes they are full of trash. The trash of disappointments, trust of anger, trust of frustrations. And there come a time when they are filled with this, all this garbage in their lives and they're looking for someone or a way to get rid of, of this trash in their body, in, in, their, in their system. And they, they try to look, get rid of this garbage. And sometimes they try to dump it to you. And at that point, you have a choice. Whether you are going to accept the trash or you are going to simply ignore it. And that, my friend, I just chose what is a better and happier choice for me. And that is just to ignore. And sometimes... The worst thing that you will do is accept the garbage, you carry it with you, and then you bring it at home, and then you try to pollute other people with the trash that you have gotten from other people. So the, 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 the taxi driver just chose or responded in a way that he, will not, um, he would not accept the trash that is being given to him. And the, and the businessman was saying, yeah, that's... That's a good and that's a nice perspective from life. And that is something that I would also want us to think about. I haven't really thought of people as garbage truck before. <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, that's kind of true uh, in somewhat. And we all have, um, I would say, the kind of garbage in our lives. We have these negative feelings, negative experiences. And because of these things, we don't, um, we don't notice it, but sometimes... We kind of spill the trash from our lives and try to pollute our kids, try to um, affect negativity and spread negative vibes to other people. And that's why, brethren, in this afternoon, I would like us to reconsider how do we respond to the negative things that happened in our lives. How do we respond? In psychology, there was this thing that they call the difference between, I probably have heard this before, the difference between respond and react. Now, I will just read here. This says, they, uh, according to psychology, now if you're going to look into dictionary, react and respond, um, they are somewhat similar in meaning. They are synonymous. But in psychology, they make a distinction between the two. They said that reactions are done on impulse without much putting thought into it or considering what the end result may be. So, the driver of the, the black car is, re is reacting. 
he is not responding. And on the other hand, response is more thought, thoughtful and done with reasoning. People respond, put their thoughts ahead of their actions. So those people respond, they think about what they will do. On the other hand, people who react put their actions ahead of their thoughts. So uh, just to give you an example, um, in, uh, on social media, they have this what they call think before you click. Have you, ever, have you heard about that? Think before you click. So those people who are responding, they are thinking before clicking. But when you react, you click first and then you kind of think, oh, is, that what the, is that the right thing to do? Is that the right response? Is that, is that something that would benefit others? So there are these things that would, um, uh, this is, these are the differences between react and respond, right? So because of this, just to make it um, easier for us, just to, for the purpose of this message, I would like to describe react is when we react with our human nature. And then respond is when we let the Holy Spirit guide us in our actions. All right? So that is just, I want to make that clear so that I could easily uh, explain this later. All right? So for us to better understand the points that I'm going to tell you, let us understand and let us learn from the greatest teacher of all time. Because this teacher, about 2,000 years ago, have already explained to us how we should respond in difficult situations. That's why um, in this, uh, for the rest of this message, I'm going to the Sermon of the Mount. And there's a portion there that would give us a clue of how we should respond in our life. Right? Because if we are going to respond just like any other people outside, then it doesn't make any difference. We are just like other people. And it, it doesn't really matter if you are going to, uh, to respond or not, or respond or react, if you are just going to respond in the same way as other people. So that's why I'm going to show you from the Bible how we must respond. Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 38. Let's go there, brethren. And I can tell you, brethren, that the teachings of Yahshua is so radical. It is so rev revolutionary that it makes you think because it's completely opposite to what is being done during their time. And even this time, look at this, brethren. I will show you. Matthew 5, verse 38. So it says here, you have heard that it was said. So this is something that is popular in the Jewish culture. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now if you're going to look into the world right now, brethren, this is actually their modus operandi or what they're the standard procedure. What you are going to me, I will also do to you. The way you respond is based on how people treat you. So this is actually what Yahshua is saying. You have heard it, that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So what does this exactly mean, brethren? Is Yahshua saying that, oh, we should disregard this uh, mosaic law, this is something archaic, this is something of old, I have a new set of commandment for you. You don't have to, you have to ignore it. Is that what Yahshua is saying here, brethren? Let's go, let's go back to the original, um, original commandment in Exodus 21, verse 22 to 25. So let's just have an understanding what it means for an eye for an, an, eye, for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Because this is what most, just like our, um, we really appreciate the message earlier. Because... A lot of atheists would use some portions of the Bible and would, they would take it out of context and they would tell you, oh, look at this. Are you believing? Are you doing this? So let's, and this is one of the, of the, uh, of the passages in the Bible that they use to attack the Christian faith. Let's go there, brethren. Exodus 21, 22 to 25. If men fight and hurt a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely, yet no harm follows, 
he shall surely be punished according as the woman's husband imposes on him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. Now, verse 23. But if any harm follows, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, strike for strike. Now, a lot of people were just, whoa, would you look at that? The God of the Old Testament is very cruel. He's very harsh. Can you just imagine if someone just, if someone accidentally um, injured another person, if someone cut, uh, someone cut his arm, then he will, his, his arm would also be cut. And people would say, are you worshipping a God who is so barbaric? Now, the problem here, brethren, is the misunderstanding of the context. You see, this passage is not generally meant to be a literal requirement of executing judgment. Instead, this is actually used as a guide. This, this, um, this principle, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, is actually a principle used so that the penalty or uh, the penalty of a crime will not go beyond the crime itself. Because the natural tendency of people, they would like to simply not get even, but they want to take more. So people would like, oh, you cost me this much of pain, I will cost you twice this pain. Now, because of this brethren, um, the, the eye for an eye principle prevents this from happening. Okay? So this is actually not literal. If you go to verse 26 to 27, you will read there, you would read there that if a man struck the eye of his servant or knock his tooth, that man should let go of his servant. And we don't see a literal eye for an eye or for a tooth for a tooth recompensation here. So this is just a guide so that the penalty for the for the crime does not go beyond what is done. So Yeshua going back to um, Going back to Matthew 5, verse 38 here, he was saying, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Now notice this, verse 39. But I tell you, not to resist an evil person. Now some people will read that, Are you sure, Yeshua, that we are not going to resist other people? Are we supposed not to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves? Are we just supposed to be a Christian doormat? Have you seen a doormat? Yung uh, the mat that is used in front of the door? Na inaapakapakan lang and it is just lie down there, will do nothing and it's just, just like uh, allow people to step on it. Are we supposed to be like that, brethren? That if someone hits us, then so we will just let them do that for us? Is, that how, is, this, is this what Yahshua is saying? Of course not. He was saying... By, by, uh, but I tell you not to resist an evil person he was saying that we should not pay evil for evil alright Yahshua is actually not saying that you should, not, uh, you should ignore the eye for an eye principle but he was saying in a personal level that these principles should be carried out by the magistrates and the judges but on the personal level you should not pay evil for evil because the natural reaction, if you are hurt, diba? especially if you look into mga bata, mag if if, uh, uh, if, if, um, if isang bata dyan, hilahin niya yung buhok ng isang bata, di ba? Di na naman paluki. He would also uh, grab the, the other girl's hair and then they would not, they would not let go until, until someone who would come and they would ask to, to let go. So, this is actually Yeshua telling us that we should not pay evil for evil. And then look at here. He continues to say, But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. What, what, what's this? This is something that is not practical. Are you serious that we are going to just let other people slap us? If someone hits you in the head with a bat, baseball bat, sa ulo, I just go to say, oh, hit me as well in my, in my body. Hit me as well in my legs. Is that what Yahshua is saying here, brethren? 
Of course not. He is actually here telling us if you're um the audience of Yahshua perfectly knew what this means. Slapping someone on the right cheek on that culture means insulting them. Imagine this. A person uh, is usually right-handed, okay? If you are going to slap someone, are you going to hit the right cheek or the left cheek? Diba? You are going to hit the left cheek of the other person. Diba? But why is Yahshua saying here that whoever slaps you the right cheek Turn the other to him also. It is because in that culture, the way to insult a person is to slap them with the back of your hand. So, instead of slapping someone like this, they are going to slap a person with the back of the hand. And this for them is one of the biggest insult in their culture. So Yahshua is saying here that if someone insults you, you're not going to retaliate with another insult. So, Yahshua is saying that if someone insults you, just turn the other cheek. Because sometimes it will not stop at the first insult. Diba? Have you heard about that now? Someone will, will, will insult you. Hindi yan matatapos sa isang insulto lang. Marami pang sasabihin yan. And Yahshua was saying that if someone insults you, do not repay with another insult. Hindi yung... Diba? If you are... Um, if, um, usually... If someone will insult you, Uy, ang pangit mo! Diba? We will say normally, Mas pangit ka! Diba? Sasabihin na, um, uh, Sasabihin na, um, your, And sometimes, They would use your mother, Mama ni mo, ingana, na, Mama na ko, ingana, na. Diba? Ay, ma- Mama ni mo, Basta, They are going to use, Insult upon insult upon insult. But Yahshua here is saying that, Instead of giving another insult to other person, you should repay it with good. Kung, kung sa, kung, um, by turning your other cheek, it means that you don't take it personally. Just let it slide. You don't just, so, uh, uh, sinabi mo ganito, I will, I will retaliate and I will give you more insult. But that's not what Yahshua is saying here. Can you just see, brethren, this is really revolutionary because this, this, is, uh, this goes against the nature of humans. Because human beings, if you attack them naturally, they will attack you. Kaya nga, di ba, if you are watching um, mga viral videos ngayon, uh, mga sa, sa Facebook or sa kung saan man, if someone in that video hits a person in the face, your natural thinking is that that person will retaliate with another punch. Magugulat ka kung hindi siya, kung, uh, if, if that person will not take revenge. So, Yahshua is saying here, Oh, we should not let, we should not um, pay insult with another insult. Turn the other cheek to him. Now, verse 40 says here, If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. In the ancient, in the ancient world, brethren, a tunic and garment is one of, is a very precious commodity. Mahal yan. Kaya nga, diba, at the time of Yahshua, when he was uh, hanging there in the, uh, the torture stake, they were casting lots for his garments because napakamahal niya at that time. And during this time, brethren, um, in, in courts, sometimes they used the garment or tunic as a security deposit. Kung sa atin pa, that's the bail money so that you could go. And when Yahshua is saying here that if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Ibigay mo na pati yung cloak mo. It, it is telling us that this is actually related to the, this, the uh, second point here. It says, And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Now, this is referring to the uh, military um, force at that time. Remember, Judea is under Roman occupancy. And these Roman soldiers, according to the law, can, can get any random person, any Jewish person in the streets and compel them to walk with him and carry the bag for a mile. Okay? So, if anyone will go, pakidala na, dalin dali mo tong gamit ko for a mile. So, they cannot say no. 
Okay? Oh, I, I cannot. I'm busy. No. Whatever you are doing, you have to drop it and carry my bag. Because that's a civic responsibility. This, that is a civic uh, duty of someone who is under the Roman ro rule. Now, Yahshua was saying here that if someone compels you to carry his bag for one, one mile, then go with him another mile. So what is Yahshua is telling here, brethren? Because sometimes, brethren, if someone insults us and then we become angry, you are actually giving that person the power to control you. Okay? Have you, have you experienced that, brethren? That your emotion, your reaction is based on how people treat you? And when you do that, brethren, you are actually relegating your power to other people. They are allow, you are allowing other people to control you. But here, brethren, some people would say, Yahshua, aren't you do, aren't the, th the teachings you are giving is for the weak? Diba? Mga mahihinang tao lang yan. Dapat gumanti ka. Dapat you should, you should strike back, you should insult back. You are teaching us to be weak. But actually, brethren, it takes more strength and courage and power to do what Yahshua is doing. Madali lang yan. Gumanti. To take revenge, that's easy. That is very easy. But to take patiently, to suffer patiently the, the wrong that you are uh, that you are taking, that is that takes more strength. Look at this, brethren. This is what the Apostle Paul has to say about this topic. Let's go to Romans 12, verse 17 to, to 21. And expound on this on this um, concept. Romans 12. Verse 17 to 21. It says here, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. So, he is saying here, he is repeating what Yahshua is saying, that you should not repay evil for evil. Verse 18, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. As much as possible, brethren, you should live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says Yahweh. So, this is telling us, brethren, that instead of avenging or taking revenge from other people, we should let God avenge for us. Isn't it wonderful, brethren, that you can live, you can live um, peaceably, you can sleep peacefully tonight, knowing that God will take revenge for you. You don't have to fight for yourself. Let God fight your battle. If someone wrongs you, you can go, go to Yahweh and say, Yahweh, ikaw na pong bahala sa akin, kayo na pong bahala sa kanila. I don't need to do anything here. I, 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 I surrender my life to you. Ikaw na pong bahala. And you know what, brethren? Every time when we don't take revenge to other people, it is actually an act of faith. It is an, actually an act of faith on our part because we are trusting that Yahweh will take justice, will, would, um, would serve justice in behalf of us. That even though we don't understand what is, how, how we are going to get justice, it is Yahweh who will get it for us. That's why, brethren, this is actually an act of faith for us. And because of that, brethren, when we let God handle the situation, you are giving God an opportunity to demonstrate His goodness, love, and wisdom. Instead of you taking, taking things into your own hands. Did you see that, brethren? So this is actually revolutionary. Because the natural thing to do we want to take revenge. Gumusto mo gumante. Kaya nga, di ba, um, if, you are, if you know the Rido culture, I don't know if you are familiar with the Rido. This is something that, um, the Rido culture is, when you kill someone, just one person in the family, that, that family has, um, that family has the duty to kill more from that other family. Ganun ang Rido. Ubusan ng lahi yan. But Yahshua is telling us that no, that is not the Christian thing to do. You see, brethren, 
going back to an eye for an eye, it is actually a, a law that limit revenge. But Yahshua here is teaching. He's, he's, he's not focused anymore in limiting. But he wants to remove, remove revenge. Iwag mo na problemahin yun. Ako nang bahala dyan. So, Yahshua is saying that this is something that we should do. Look at this in verse 20 of Romans 12. If an enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will reap coals of fire on his head. Kasi at that time, brethren, um, they know an eye for an eye uh, law. And some Pharisees or religious leaders have thought that they, this has given them a license to also take personal revenge. Okay? So, Yahshua is correcting this kind of thinking through his teachings. So, let's continue here. Let's go back to Matthew 5, brethren. And yes, Matthew 5, Matthew 5, verse 39. <clears throat> so, we are now in verse 40, 41. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. And verse 42, brethren, this is very... This, I just can't imagine the disciples or the, 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 the people listening to Yahshua... They, they, they were um, bewildered. Is this really true? Verse 42. Give to him who asks you. And from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. This is impractical. Yahshua, this is impractical. Alam mo ba? Um, um, you are going to give who asks you? Tapos kung meron mang hihiram, papahiramin mo? This is something that is that runs contrary to human nature. As humans, we want to get as much as we want to keep as much as we want. We don't want to give. Pero here, Yahshua is saying, give to him who asks you. And from him who wants to borrow from you, you do not turn away. Does this mean that kung sino-sino nila, kung mang, uy, uy, alam mo ba si Joshua, sabi niya nung Sabado, sab, sa, Sabad, sabi niya, anyone who borrows from him, will, he will not turn away. So mangutang tayo kay Joshua. Hindi yan, mga, hindi na... He will not deny. Kahit magkano pahiramin mo. Is that what it means, brethren? Now, if you're going to... I would just like to clarify this point. It says here in Matthew 10, verse 16. Matthew 10, verse 16 says, Behold, I sent you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as servants, serpents and harmless as doves. It means that you should have a discerning mind that you would be able to um, to identify those people who really need help. And once you identify those people who really need help, that's when you are going to give and you should not uh, you should not turn away from that person because that person actually needs help. Okay? Yahshua is saying it here that we should be generous. Mapagbigay. Diba? Sometimes uh, we forget about being generous. Now, forget ko um um uh, what you what, what you call this? Uh, ko, uh, ultimo piso na lang hindi mo pa, pa hindi mo pa may bigay. Sometimes we forget about being generous, being uh, charitable. Na uh, we don't help other people because eh kung magbibigay ako wala na akong makakain. Kung magbibigay ako wala na akong pangbayad, wala na akong panggastos. Diba? But you know what, brethren? This is another this is another act of faith. Because when we know that we are really helping those who are in need, those who are really poor, yung talaga na nangangailangan, that those people na wala talagang ibang mapuntahan, when we do that, brethren, we know and we can trust God that He will also provide what we need. Kasi sometimes we forget that God is someone who could bless us beyond measure. That whatever happens, He would also give us what we need. But we have a, a duty for we are, we have a duty for other people that we should help them in time of their needs. So this is what Yahshua is saying here, brethren. We need to be generous. Kaya nga, if possible, uh, kumain kay sa labas, think of giving a tip. Wag na magdalawang isip, because 
those people just working um, minimum wage a day, sobrang liit lang, tapos um, siguro makabit, makabigay ka ng 20, 50 pesos, o kahit 100, dadamutan mo pa. So, be generous. Don't think twice giving tip, because that is one of the ways you could be helping other people. And those who are really qualified to be helped. Alright, kasi um, if you go to 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, let's go there brethren, just to give you uh, an idea that there are people who might ask for help, but they are really not qualified to be helped. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10 says here, For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Nakita niyo Um, sometimes, um, there's some um, people who are asking for money in, in the streets. And you could see that person is able-bodied. Able-bodied person. Kaya niya magtrabaho, kaya niya mag, uh, uh, he can do uh, labor work or whatever. But still, he chooses to ask for money. So, if that person refuses to work, then he should not eat. You are just, um, if you are going to help them, you are just encouraging them to depend on you more and more. Instead of doing their best, And, and providing for themselves and also for others. So, just to give you that, um, that idea that we should also qualify those who once need, uh, who, those who people that we need to help. So, that's verse 42. Give to him who asks you and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. That didn't end their brethren. Meron pa! Yahshua's revolutionary teaching does not end there. Look at here, brethren, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now, if you look into the um, uh, chapter 5, almost everything that Yahshua has already um, quoted is actually in the Bible. It is something that is correct. But in here, there's something that is added. Let's go to the original um, commandment, brethren. In Leviticus. Okay. Leviticus 19 verse 18, brethren. Leviticus 19 verse 18. This is the original. This is the, uh, the verse that was quoted by Yahshua. 19.18. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Where did they get these additional words that it says, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy? Where did they get that? Hate your enemy. Actually, brethren, the religious leaders at the time, the teachers, made an inference. Because if you're going to love your neighbor, then we could say to hate, to hate our enemies. And you see, brethren, if you're living during the first century uh, Judea, you, and you are under Roman occupation, you are actually going to, um, to interact with your enemies every day, the Romans. And these people and... Um, Um, these people would like to they, their ultimate goal is to be removed from the occupation and that's why they are looking forward to the Messiah the Messiah that they think that they would deliver them from the Roman government that's why brethren when Yahshua if you are going to read we are going to read that later it would really shock them because they were thinking that Yahshua would deliver them from the Romans And yet, we will read later that this is not the case. So, these people had been thought that, oh, we need to love our neighbors. And our neighbors are the ones who are the Jews. Those who are, um, those, those who are um, malapit sa atin. Just those who are adjacent to us. And those enemies, we can hate them because after all, God hates evil people. And because of that, we should also hate our enemies. We should not We should not love them. We should hate them. And because of that, brethren, we could also see that even today, di ba? 
if you're looking, if you're going to the, if you're going to um, Middle East right now, batang bata pa, very little. They're already taught to hate the Jews, to hate the Christians. Karun na tinuturo sa kanila. And even if you're looking sometimes, even the Jews, some of them are taught to hate as well the Arabs. So, this is Yahshua, this is the type of hate that Yahshua would like to remove. So, what was the prescription of Yahshua here, brethren? It says, But I say to you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now, this is another thing. This is actually revolutionary. Perhaps we really, uh, perhaps for us, we really cannot grasp how re- revolutionary, radical this is. But if you are into that place, brethren, if you are Jews and you are under Roman o- occupation and you are told by Yahshua, Oi, you have to love them. This is actually different because all of this life, all of their lives, they have been taught to hate their enemies. And one day, someone steps into their life and say, oh, 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 that's not how you do it. You have to love your enemies. So this is kind of revolutionary for them. And look at this, brethren. You need to bless those who curse you. When someone insults you, you have to bless them. You don't return insults with insults. And what, what else, brethren? Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Diba? Even those people whom we like, we really pray for them. Yung mga taong gusto, yung, uh, people we like, we don't actually pray for them every day. Tapos ngayon, Yasha would say, pray for your enemies. He wants us to add our enemies in our prayer list. Now that's something against, again, against our human nature. But that is exactly what God wants for us. And, 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 sa kabila ng lahat na ito, brethren, what is the reason why God wants us to love our enemies. Why does God wants us to turn the other cheek? Why does God wants us to give extra, to go the extra mile? Why? Yahshua gave us the answer. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Did you see that, brethren? Yeshua is actually, Yeshua is actually separating the believers from the followers. If you only believe, brethren, it's so easy. Oh yes, I believe. I, I, I believe that this is something good. It is nice to hear. But Yahshua is saying, you should do what you believe. You need to follow. And those who do it are considered as a child of Yahweh. You see here, brethren, that Yahshua is telling us that in every action, in any response that we have, in anything that we do, people should be able to see a glimpse of God in our lives. Have you ever experienced this before, brethren, na they would say na, Uy, look, tignan mo to siya, oh, an- an- anak ni so-and-so, ni Mr. Oh, so, um, for example, um, this person is anak ni Mr. Impantado. Kasi tignan mo yung tsura. Kamukhang kamukha. Hindi, it cannot, it, um, you cannot deny this. Sometimes, um, I remember when uh, we were still in uh, in Manila, someone called my father, Josh, Joshua, because we are really um we look almost the same when when we pag nakatalikod kami. So in the same manner, brethren, when other people see us, they would be able to say, "Uy, tong taong to anak ng justo. He's sa he's a child of, of God because he is someone who is different in approach. Ibang iba. This person is." different from other people. You iba, hindi mo pagkatiwalaan. This person you can trust because he is someone who follows and does the will of God. So, you could see here, brethren, that we should act, we should think, and the, word, the way we say things should reflect the godly character. That they would be able to say that we are actually the Son of God. Look at here, brethren. In verse 45, it says here, let's continue reading, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, 
For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Grabe. Our father is good not just to the righteous, but he is also good to the wicked. Both wicked and righteous experience the sun, experience rain. And in the same manner, manner brethren, because that is how God treats us, then that, is, that should be also the way that we should treat others. That should be our response. Diba? Remember what happened to Yahshua? He was insulted. He was punched in the face. He was, uh, he was, um, he was tortured. And yet, did Yahshua insult back? Did he fight back? No, he did not. And that's why, brethren, um, this is our. This should also be a response. Pag meron taon jan dumaan at sinabi ng, they would, um, they would persecute us. They would curse us. We should have a different approach in our life. Now I remember when I was in college, when they knew about my belief, they called me kulto. Uy, kulto ka. Ano ba yung nasa, ano, ano ba yung mga, mga paniniwala mo? Kulto ka, kulto. Tapos, when I was in high school, someone called me ligaw na tupa. Grabe, no? Ang lalim. <laughs> they call me, uh, in, in English, they call me lost sheep. So, actually, if you are going to share your faith online, you would receive a lot of all kinds of insults. That's why, brethren, if you are not someone who is converted, ang sarap sumagot. Ikaw ah, puro gato siya sabi mo, susuntukin kita, di ba? That is the easier way to do, but God has called us to the higher standard of living. And instead of cursing other people, you have to pray for them. Instead of just one mile, you have to go the extra mile. Instead of, um, instead of just giving your one cloak, you give another, another your tunic. And when people see that, they would stop and, they would stop and see, Uy, Kakaibang tao to ah. Sino pa tong taong to? Ah, yan. He is a child of God. Because of how we respond. He is a child of the Most High God. Because of how we respond. And they could see that. Di ba? Uh, well, let's just read here. In verse 46. Because Joshua is giving us another example here. 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Kung mahal mo lang yung mahal, yung mahal ka, di ba? Are you, do you have a reward to do that? Do not, um, do not even the tax collector, collectors do the same? So, kung isang tao, if you are going to see a person like this, oh, tignan mo tong taong to. He loves his parents, he loves his siblings, he loves his family, he loves other people, he loves this, he, 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 um, he loves his, um, his, his wife, his husband. That is something expected. Expected nyan. That is actually the bare minimum. And people will not stop and say na, Uy, kakaiba to ah. Mahal naman yung kapatid niya. Mahal, mahal, mahal naman yung anak niya. And that is expected. So what reward do you have? But Yahshua is saying that, if you are going to love, you are also going to love other, especially the your enemies. And when you do that, brethren, they are going to stop and think, Uy, kakaibang tao to. He does not respond in the way, the same way that other people do. Diba, kuminsan, you say, are you, aren't you supposed to be sad? I, aren't you supposed to be angry? Ginawa niya sa'yo to? Ay, hindi. Okay lang. Kanyan lang. So, we are having that different approach in life. So, Yahshua is saying here that, you will have a different reward when you love those who doesn't love you. Verse 47, And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Now, if you look into all this chapter 5, brethren, it is so difficult to do. You need supernatural help to accomplish this. And verse 48, it says, Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Remember that in Sermonet, brethren? Yahshua said to the young ruler, If you want to be perfect, sell your property. Yahshua is telling here once again, Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So we can see here, brethren, that we cannot do this on our own. 
We can, as long as we are in the flesh, we cannot be perfect. This is something very difficult to do. But why is Yahshua saying that we should be perfect? Bakit? Kung impossible. Because He wants us to aim higher. To aim the greatest standard of living. And that is the standard of Yahweh. So, when we become, when we try to strive for perfection, brethren, we become, we try to do our best to be blameless. Now, when people think about you, wala silang masabi masama. Ah, yan, oh, okay yan siya. They, they cannot, uh, they cannot uh, present something wrong that you have done in the past or you have, um, you have lived a godly life. So, people would be able to say that we are really children of the Most High God. I remember the story of Daniel. They are trying to accuse him. They are trying to look into his records, kung anong pwede natin sabihin sa, sa king. He was looking into, wala, wala talagang makita. Wala silang makita problema. So, ano ginawa nila? They invented a fault. They cannot find any fault in, in Daniel that they, they resorted to inventing something. So, I hope the same thing could be said to us. That wala silang makita ang problema. That we can, we live a blameless life in our thoughts, words, and actions. So brethren, we could see here that when we do things differently, different from what other people supposed to or normally respond, we become living examples to other people. And we do, when we do those things, brethren, we are actually putting a seed in their hearts. That, some, that God willing, in the future, it will sprout into a new believer. Our examples would become, would inspire them. Kaya nga, di ba? We become lights of the world so that people would be able to see our works and they would be able to worship and glorify God in heaven. So, brethren, I hope that you were able to see and to learn something new today, brethren. That in our thoughts, in the way we respond, I hope that we are able to reflect God's character. That every time that we say things, that everything we, everything, every time we do things, that they would be able to say that this person is a child of God. I hope and pray, brethren, that we take this into heart because our living example could also help others in transforming their lives. Hello friends, I need your help. If this is not too much to ask, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. This should only take 5 seconds of your time. But this simple gesture would help me reach more people and share the word of God with the rest of the world. You have the power to make a difference in people's lives.